Okay, in this video, we're going to look at an example where we verify Green's theorem. And so let's just recall what Green's theorem says. So we want to assume that C is a positively oriented, piecewise smooth, simple closed curve that bounds a region D. And then also, if P and Q have continuous first partials on an open region containing D, then we have this equivalence of integrals. So on the left is a line integral around C of P dx plus Q dy. So notice that's really a line integral over the vector field P comma Q. And then over here on the right hand side is a double integral over the region D of partial Q partial X minus partial P partial Y. Okay, so the example that we're going to use to verify this is this line integral over C of x dx plus y dy, where C is the line segment from 0, 1 to 0, 0 to 1, 0, and then the parabola um, y equals 1 minus x squared from 1, 0 to uh, 0, 1. So I've drawn a picture here. So notice we're starting up here at 1, 0. We come down on this line segment to the origin. That's the first thing that we say we do. Then we go across here to the point 1, 0 on this line, and then we go back up via the parabola. So uh, this gives us this orange curve, and then this pink region in the middle is the region bound by this curve, which is called D. Um, and I just want to point out here that C is equal to C1 union C2 union C3 in this case. So in fact, in order to find the line integral over C, we're going to have to find the line integral on all of these parts and add them together. Okay, so uh, let's do the line integral first, and then we'll apply Green's theorem and calculate the right-hand side, and then we'll see that they're the same. Okay, so we need to parameterize each part of this curve. So let's go with C1 first. So I'll call this R1 of T. And now there's a standard way to parameterize a line segment, but that's not really what I want to use in this case because there's a simpler method. What I want to do in this case is notice that the X value is always zero and then the y value is changing, so we can let the y value be t. And then, in order to make it go from y equals 1 to y equals 0, we can say t is in the interval 1 to 0. So we're abusing notation a little bit, but the takeaway here is we're starting at time t equals 1 and we're ending at time t equals 0. You can also re-parameterize this so it's going forward in time, but I think this is a fine way to do it. Okay, so now let's look at C2. So along C2, we'll have uh, the line given by R2. And notice here, the Y part is always zero and the X part is trending between zero and one. So here we have zero comma T, and here T starts at zero and ends at one. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at uh, C3. So uh, notice along C3, we are on this parabola, and we have an equation for the parabola. That equation is y equals 1 minus x squared. So we can just go ahead and let the x component of this parameterization be t, which makes the y component 1 minus t squared. And then we need to run time in reverse again, so we need to go 1 to 0, because we're starting here at x equals 1 and we're ending at x equals 0. Okay, good. Now, I want to put a, a couple more things down here just as a reminder when we calculate this line integral, and that is uh, this dx component is really dx dt times dt, and then this dy component is really dy by dt dt, where um, Everything in this column is the x component of the parameterization, and everything in the right component is the y component of the parameterization. So that's what we're going to use here. So let's do each of these one part at a time. So the integral over c1 of x dx plus y dy. So notice that's going to be the integral from 1 to 0, because that's the value that our parameters take on in the correct order of x dx, but notice that x is always 0, so this part goes to 0 here, 
and then y dy so we're going to need to use dy dt dt so notice uh, y is t and then we have dy dt dt so that's just going to be t dt okay so we've got something like that for um, the integral over c1 now let's go ahead and look at uh, the integral over c2 now i'm not calculating that for a reason and you'll see why um, so now the integral over c2 of x dx plus y dy. So that's going to be the integral from 0 to 1 because along c2 time runs forward. And now here the y component is always 0. So I made a mistake here. This should be t comma 0. So the y component is always 0. Um, which means I can say that this is always equal to zero and then the x component um, is equal to t and then dx will just be dt so here we have t dt okay good but now notice that um, this integral and this integral are equal and opposite of each other because this one is uh, the integral of t dt running from 1 to 0 and that one is the integral of t dt running from 0 to 1. So when we add those together at the end, those are actually going to cancel. Um, so now let's go ahead and calculate the integral over c3 of x dx plus y dy. And so that's going to be the integral from 1 to 0 of, um, so let's see what x dx is. So that's going to be t dt from this right here. And let's see what dy d, uh, y dy is. So that's going to be 1 minus t squared times, so dy dt, so that's going to be minus 2t dt. Okay, so we've got something like that going on, but notice that can simplify quite a bit. So uh, that can be the integral from 0 to 1, and then notice uh, we are going to have the following. We'll have minus t plus uh, 2t cubed, and that is dt. So we have that integral. Okay, so I'm going to clean up this little bottom of the board and then um, we'll finish off this line integral. So I've cleaned up the board and I've kind of summarized where we are. So the line integral over C is going to be the line integral over C1 plus the line integral over C2 plus the line integral over C3. And so the line integral over C1 is this integral from 1 to 0. Here the line integral of C2 is the same function but the integral from 0 to 1. So now these are going to cancel out to 0 because they are equal and opposite of each other given that you're integrating the same function over the domain that's been reversed. And then all that's left to do is calculate this one, but notice this one is going to be uh, t to the fourth over uh, 2 minus t squared over 2 evaluated at 1 and 0, just taking the antiderivative, but that gives us a solution of 0. Okay, so we've calculated the line integral and we've gotten a value of zero. Now I'll clean up the board and we'll calculate the corresponding double integral and we also will get um, a value of zero. Okay, we just got done calculating the line integral and now we're going to calculate the corresponding double integral. So notice by Green's theorem, this should be the integral over D of um, partial Q partial X minus partial P partial Y da and notice here q is equal to the function y and p is equal to the function x because q is the function in front of this dy component and p is the function in front of the dx component okay great but notice partial q partial x is zero and partial p partial y is zero so this is in fact the double integral over d of zero da great so obviously this is going to very very quickly give you zero whereas uh, the example before took a lot of work to get zero now obviously this is going to be zero but i want to go ahead and set this up as an iterated integral just as a review so notice this is a type one iterated integral so we can write this as the integral um, x goes from 0 to 1 
and then y goes from 0 to 1 minus x squared of 0 dy dx. Okay, good. But, you know, like we said before, this is 0, which matches with what we got for the line integral, and that's a good place to stop.